Nate Sears was a landscaper who worked at a housing complex on Cape Cod. Part of his job was to regularly check the piers at an adjacent beach for any kind of storm damage. One morning while he was doing that, he looked out and he saw a 10-foot pilot whale coming toward the shore. And when he looked a little bit closer, he saw a second whale and then a third. Well, at first, Nate was stunned and filled with awe, but then he became alarmed because on Cape Cod, whales frequently will beach themselves. And Nate just knew that that's what these three whales were headed for, and he had to do something fast. So he summoned a neighbor to call the National Seashore Service, but he knew that those whales were going to reach the beach before the help could arrive. So he quickly took off his socks and his shoes, he rolled up his pants, and he waded out into the water toward the first whale. He caught up with it in waist-deep water on a sandbar, and then, operating completely from instinct, Nate simply placed his hands on the whale and held them there. The whale had been thrashing around. When he got there, and Nate could see that it had cuts on it where it was being battered by the sand. When he placed his hands on it and held them there, the thrashing stopped. And the whale became completely still. Nate later, later said that in that moment he realized this was probably that whale's first encounter with a human being, and that both he and the whale were operating out of instinct to figure out how to deal with, come through this encounter that was unlike anything they had ever experienced. Well, after the whale calmed down, Nick very gently turned it and pointed it away from the shore. The whale began to swim out to sea. Then Nate went over to the second whale and did the same thing. He placed his hands on it until the thrashing stopped. And when that whale became calm, Nate turned it once again and pointed it away from the shore. And that whale, too, began to swim out to sea. Well, by this time, the help from the National Seashore Service had arrived. And so they went out and they helped Nate as he also turned the third whale and sent that back. You know, sometimes when whales are rescued from beaching themselves, they will come ashore in another location. But that didn't happen this day. Those three whales just swam away and stayed out at sea. Now, we don't know why that was, but we could certainly conjecture that Nate's energy and his willingness to hold them until they became still made a difference. What a beautiful story, isn't it? It is so incredibly moving. And it reminds us of some really important truths. First and foremost, we are all energetically connected. And the energy that we emit affects the energy of those around us. We are each an individual field of energy. And our energy fields communicate with each other. It's happening all the time. Science author Lynn McTaggart writes, at our most elemental, we are not a chemical reaction, but an energetic charge. Human beings and all living beings are a coalescence of energy in a field of energy connected to every other thing in the world. It all grows into one big energy field. Every person, every animal, indeed every cell, molecule, and atom, every community at the higher level, every community, every group, are in essence fields of ener energy and information. So it's like nesting dolls, you know, those little Russian nesting dolls. One field of energy is nestled within the next to continually higher levels of complexity, atom to molecule to cell, and so on up, culminating in the mega morphogenic field that includes all of creation. In her wonderful book, Field of Compassion, which is actually where I got the beautiful story about Nate, 
In this beautiful book, author Judy Canato writes, Life is primarily an energetic dance, and we are all partners who sway in rhythm and create the dance each and every moment of our lives. We are constantly influencing and being influenced, in training and resonating, emitting positive or negative energy, affecting and being affected by all that is. The implications of this, of course, are profound. It tells us that, indeed, we are all connected, whether we realize it or not. Second, we are all emitting positive or negative energy all the time at any given moment. And third, the energetic frequency we emit affects the other energy fields around us. And You know, we even have a sense of what our internal vibration, how it may affect others. So research shows that when the energy of two beings comes together, that the one with the most cohesive quantum waves, the most ordered brain pattern, will often set the frequency for the other. It's called entrainment. You've probably heard about this with grandfather clocks. So you put them in the same room, pretty sure. Pretty soon their pendulum starts swinging in the same time together. So when a peaceful person sends calming thoughts, the recipient registers the peace in his or her body in ways that can be measured. You've probably experienced this before, being in the presence of someone who was greatly at peace or centered or calm. People who talk about the feeling of peace they get when they're in the company of the Dalai Lama, for example, or the Pope, or just advanced sort of spiritual leaders. The British reported that Gandhi was doing something to shift their energy they knew not what, but it got to them. We can similarly assume that Jesus' presence had the same calming effect. Isn't that how you picture him? Judy Canato suggests that in his own way, Jesus was trying to create a morphogenic field, probably never would have used that term, a field of information and energy, quote, in which love is the standard operating procedure and genuine concern for the other is the behavioral norm. The kingdom of God that he pointed to, that he spoke of, that he lived in and exemplified was a realm of kindness and generosity healing, and compassion. Wouldn't we all lived, love to live in such a world today? Imagine how it would be to step outside of your home and feel enveloped in love. What then can we do to create that world? We can raise our vibration. We can raise our vibration. We can shift our energy to a higher frequency. When I say a higher frequency, I don't mean a frenetic frequency. I don't mean this. A higher frequency is a more ordered and predictable and smooth operating energy. The higher levels are how we are when we are at peace. We can learn to shift our energy so that we can actually get into that vibration and then share that vibration with others. It is one of the simplest, most accessible ways that we can make a difference in the world, and we underestimate, we underestimate the difference that our own vibration can make. How do we do this? First of all, we pay attention to our own internal state. Right? We always talk about this immunity. Become the observer of your own thoughts, the stories that you're making up what's going on inside of you. It's a foundational and huge spiritual practice. So first of all, we pay attention to what's going on within us, and we notice, am I generating anger, fear, frustration, blame, unforgiveness, judgment? If so, we can give ourselves the same gift that Nate gave that whale, a few moments of peace few moments of quiet to just recenter and to reorient ourselves. And then we can consciously choose to attune ourselves to a vibration of peace and love and compassion and reassurance and hope. It's really all up to us through this simple process. We can learn to become 
a non-anxious presence. So when I was in ministerial school, this is what they say, if every minister, first and foremost, more than anything else, be a non-anxious presence. I don't always live up to that, but I know that that's what I'm aspiring to, to be a non-anxious presence. In other words, to raise your vibration, to see from a higher perspective, and in so doing, emit that energy that helps others to calm down. Well, this is good advice for all of us, is it not? And here's one very simple, direct, practical way that each and every one of us can raise our vibration and shift our energy. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. Stop cursing. Stop blaming. Stop railing at the TV. Stop criticizing yourself and other people and other groups. Stop spewing negative energy that is toxic for both you and those around you and does no earthly good. Let me just repeat. Complaining does no earthly good. It, in fact, makes you miserable. We think we're sending it out, but it continues to stir within us, does it not? It actually gains a little more energy, and we're not a whole lot of fun to be around either. I realize that we live in a culture that is complaint-laden. People complain. It's sometimes how we connect and commiserate, right? So today I brought along a little tool to help each and every one of you cultivate the habit of not complaining. Yes, indeed. It's a purple bracelet, a purple wristband. And those of you who are watching online, it, there's nothing magic about this, although it's great. But, it, you know, you can substitute another, ne uh, another bracelet or wristband or a piece of string or rubber band, whatever it is. And here's what you do with it. You put it on your wrist and anytime you catch yourself complaining, you move it to the other wrist. Oh, that's not so difficult, is it, right? Just start paying attention. You got to move this. Here's your challenge. Do this for 21 days. Go 21 days without having to move your wristband. 21 days without complaining. They say that it takes 21 days to form a new habit. That's what we're about here. You're forming a new habit of not complaining. So of course, some of you have heard of this before. It stems from an initiative several years ago that was launched by Will Bowen. He was a unity minister at uh, First Church Unity, First Christ Unity up north of Kansas City. He went on the Oprah Winfrey show, talked about the Purple Bracelet campaign, a complaint-free world is what it was called. So we are following that model. But we have our own tailor-made wristbands just for you. And they, <laughs> yes, from wrist, Wristband Brothers online. And it says, no complaints whatsoever. And on the other side it says, blessed and grateful. It's an energy shift. It's a consciousness shift. When you all leave here today, the ushers will have one of these for each of you. Now, let me address what you may be thinking. First, you may be thinking, 21 days without complaining, that is impossible. <laughs> I hear you. Let me assure you, it is not. It is not impossible. It requires focus, commitment, discipline more than anything. It requires mindfulness so that you pay attention to what's going on and catch yourself before you complain, criticize, whatever it might be. Let me suggest that you make it easy on yourself at the beginning. Forget about the 21 days. Try to get through one day, one day without complaining. And of course, build from there. And if that's too much, one hour, one morning, whatever it needs to be. The idea is when you catch yourself, don't beat yourself up about it. We're working on something here. Don't make it into a big deal. OK, I complain, I'm going to move it. You're learning. It's like a new skill that you're learning. When I did this before, uh, back when it was first kicked off, I went 19 days without complaining. Yes. And <laughs> no, but listen, the energy shift was palpable. It was 
phenomenal. It reminded me when I stopped drinking coffee. I just felt a quieting inside, just a peace inside. And it was so empowering and expanding, really, to just pay attention to my own mindset and consciously choose love and compassion. It was a great spiritual work. And you like yourself better when you're doing it. You like yourself better. Second thing you may be thinking, isn't it better to express our feelings? We're not supposed to hold these in. Aren't we supposed to tell everybody what we're feeling or at least say it out loud? No, not necessarily. <laughs> Up to a point, perhaps. But there's a big difference between stating something that needs to be changed as a precursor to action versus continually venting randomly at the universe. Third thing you may be thinking, why bother? Do this for yourselves. This is for your own well-being. You know, we create our own internal hell when we are constantly taking issue with what is, when we are wishing things were different, when we are continually finding fault in ourselves and in others. It's a terrible way to live. It's a very miserable way to live. And what an empowering realization that we can make a different choice, that we can consciously shift our energy in a different direction. A year and a half ago um, or so, I shared on a Sunday about my neighbor, a couple of doors down from me, who typically hangs very big flags off of his front porch, uh, some of them with messages that I find upsetting. I used to go by his house, and I would feel myself constrict. And now when I go by his house, I consciously pause, and I bless him. And I say to myself, I think he must be very afraid. And I send him love. And I hope that he feels that vibe that I'm sending him. But even if he doesn't, I do. I do. Let me be clear. I am not saying that we must accept everything as it is. We all, each and every one of us, has a responsibility to help make this a better world. And we also know that whatever change we want to make on the outside must first begin on the inside. We sing it every single Sunday. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let it begin in me. The world needs our constructive compassion far more than our idle complaining. You know, these days it feels like we have a lot of whale-sized issues coming at us, doesn't it? We do, threatening to cast us on the rocks, so to speak. Certainly the continuing pandemic, the environmental crises, political conflict, systemic racism, social divisions, on and on. Wearing our little wristband can serve as a reminder that we're all in this together, that we're all connected, and we need each other. And the beautiful thing that is in any challenge we may be facing, whether large or small, we can remember the fine, beautiful, inspiring example of Nate Spears dealing with that whale, wading out to the edge of the unknown, responding from a place of care and concern, holding the space for healing, and then imparting our energy to redirect the movement. This is what the world needs from us more than anything right now. It is what we need from ourselves and what we need from each other. Get your bracelet. No complaints whatsoever. Let's turn now to our meditation. Let's just take a moment to close our eyes, get centered, breathe in deeply. Ah, feeling this fresh energy, this energy of possibilities and transformation, new horizons. Feeling with 
within us a sort of an uptick of willingness to do something good for ourselves, good for our world, take a positive step in a new direction. I invite you for a moment to call to mind this beautiful story of Nate and the whales. And imagine for a moment that the universe, in this moment, is putting a gentle touch on you and holding, holding the space for you. For your peace, for your healing, for your reassurance, for your awakening. Breathe it in. The infinite pulling for you, calling you to come up higher. And now I invite you to bring into your mind someone in your life who you love, you care about, who may be going through a difficult time, or perhaps it's someone you don't even know, someone very different from you who you can imagine is struggling. Take a moment now for just a short time in the silence to imagine how it would feel to extend yourself as if to put your hands on that person's spirit. Breathe calm into them. Send them peace and love. In the silence. for this feeling of peace that we can generate with our attention, with our focus, with our hearts. We go forward from this moment with new dedication to raising our vibration, shifting our energy, being an emissary of peace, connection, and healing. We know that we have that power in us. And so today we say, we say bring it on for all these blessings, for our universe unfolding, for us being influencers of that to a higher good. We say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. sharing of our love offering in support of this community. I invite you to give in that same energy and spirit of gratitude, knowing that every gift you give, every penny you give is so greatly appreciated and it makes